Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All fresh and clean. Just got done taking a shower. Ah! Always feel better, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my sister, Barbara, who, uh, you know, made a, a, a really great offering. And there, there are these offerings upon the table of which I believe the sons and daughters bring to the table and of which we can begin to, to uh, eat, start to share. And uh, I will, Sister Barbara, do exactly what she said and take some time in the study of uh, the names, not only of Israel, but of uh, Esau. And uh, a name study. And I'm sure that in that study, as well as, uh, you know, I, I was reminded of the prophecies relative to each one of the tribes of Israel. And uh, there, there's something that, you know, is outside of the box. And, and I know a lot of people have been, have been sharing about uh, taking our faith outside of the box, which to me is the doctrines and traditions of men and their teachings, okay, in the literal, and uh, seeking God. And I suppose another way of looking at uh, looking outside of the box, or, or you know, is is to come outside of the temple, okay, <laughs> or come out of ourselves, Amen, Jesus, in our in our our search in seeking out the truth of God that's hidden beneath the surface, okay, uh, outside of the box, okay, of doctrinal and traditional teachings passed on to us by men, <coughs> which is the whole issue of what we're coming into in the latter rain. Now, these households of faith, I assure you, there will be a revival, okay, of course, as with all revivals, connected to the literal okay uh, expression of that revival there will be those who will stay okay they'll enjoy the uh, the fruit of the spirit and all oh, they'll just give praise and thanks to God and but they won't allow any of it any different than before to settle into their hearts and allow it to start to help them to see things differently this is where the separation of the wheat and the tears about to begin to take place. Because when that latter day rain, which many believe has already taken place, and they're claiming that, uh, uh, okay, you're, you need to see uh, Joel's prophecy, all right, in different way uh, than the latter rain. I don't think the two are the same. Uh, Joel's prophecy, as I've said before, I believe was fulfilled in 1967 in around the Six-Day War with Israel. It was also a period of a blood-red moon time on a festival day for Israel. Okay, but we are spiritually Israel. So the Holy Spirit moves upon the heavens and the earth, okay, in what it does when it comes forth. So... Uh, both in the households of faith, there was a uh, uh, what they called a charismatic movement in the uh, Catholic Church, which they stuck in the basement. And uh, then there was a renewal of the Pentecostal and uh, full gospel evangelic movement in and around that same period of time. And that, I believe, is that period between now and then is the period of which the lamps, okay, they've fallen back to sleep. When you look at the uh, parable of the ten virgins slash bridesmaids, which is what they really are, they are not the bride. They are those, those who enter in, okay, to the house, all right, <clears throat> and, but the house is the bride, the body, okay. So anyway, there are the attendants to the bride. Anyway, uh, that being what it is, praise God, uh, in that parable, they trim their lamps again. Okay. <laughs> in the trimming of the lamps, there we have the latter rain, day rain, the Holy Spirit moving upon them again, of which they've trimmed their lights, okay, been awakened, 
all right? And now you're going to begin to see within the next three years, over the next three-year period, amen, Jesus, thank you, Father, which my brother, uh, Sifted Believer, made an offering, amen, Jesus, some time ago about uh, Joshua and uh, those of you that listen, amen, Jesus. I want you to check this out, too, thinking outside of the box. Joshua and the tribe of Israel <coughs> camped for three days on this side of the Jordan before they entered into the Promised Land. And I want you to see that as this period of time of the separation of the wheat from the tear, the latter rain, <coughs> and the double portion for the ministers of fire who have received the first portion of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who are about to receive the second portion, which is when they come forth as the ministers of fire. <coughs> now, this is all in the refiner's fire, the purging, the cleansing, the washing, all right, and the Holy Spirit promised for the outer court, for the uh, wheat that are in there. <coughs> and God knows the thought and intent of their heart. He knows who the wheat are and he knows who the tear are. So uh, you can take it from there as far as who receives what, okay? Now, <coughs> a lot of repentance going on in the church. Uh, during this period of time, three days of encampment, which is also what we've shared before about the three days of darkness. Because the enemy is set for it. In the natural realm and the spiritual realm, these things are taking place. Which is why I've also shared with you that I believe this is the period of time of which natural Israel will enter into the Psalms 83 war. And it will not be a two or three or six or seven day war. It will be a prolonged an extended war which I believe will last for two and a half to three years during this three day period all right, of which Joshua is camped with the children of Israel on this side of the promised land on this side of the Jordan River that's that three days we're getting ready to come into right now because the sons of darkness and the sons of light gather together what's it say upon the top of Mount Zion so, this is our gathering time, all right? Separation first, and then the encampment. So this encampment now brings us what? Brings us into the next set of three-year periods. I've mentioned to you before that there is nothing that states particularly about the witnesses, of which I've said I believe they represent the body of Christ and the remnant. All right, that these are the two witnesses that stand up. Will they have individual mouthpieces? Okay, for the trumpet, which they represent the trumpet. Amen. Every trumpet has a mouthpiece. So I am not saying there will not be literally two men slash one man, one woman, two women. Could be whatever the Lord. I, 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 for me, when I read the Word of God, I, I want to get the essence of the Word out. So many times it may it may even state that they're men. Okay, there may be something in the Word of God that makes it uh, uh, impossible for it to be women. I I don't know because I don't look at things that way. I don't look at it. To, it doesn't make any difference to if they're male or female to me. Amen, Jesus. All I'm interested is in the witness and the testimony of which they're going to give. And if you don't think that witness and testimony is important, you better think again. <laughs> All right. Praise God. And they will testify of the thing, same thing. I've already been sharing with you in part. Some have. My sister uh, Barbara, when she made that offering, okay, that's a part of that heavenly manna. Things of which we're supposed to go ahead and take a look at. And I will. And... Uh, uh, my brother, a sifted believer, when he, when he shared about Joshua and the three days of being camped on this side of the river before they entered into the promised land. Now, what's the promised land? To me, it's coming under the anointed covering of the sons and daughters of God. It's entering into the barn. When they cross over the river, that muddy Jordan River, okay, which Naaman was told uh, by the prophet to go to it and dunk himself down seven times. Okay, this is thinking out of the box again. You need to look at that and say, okay, what is the Lord trying to show us 
in reference to this muddy Jordan River and Naaman being dunked down and being healed of his leprosy. There is no word in the Word of God that cannot be spiritually discerned and understood as a type. Nothing in there. Okay? It's the literal covering up the surface of the pearls that are buried beneath. We have the parables to teach us, to guide us, to help us to see and understand. And this was what Jesus came and brought to the house, natural house of Israel, of which they rejected. Not only him, but entering into that new covenant with God, of whom he told them, okay, uh, that there would be a time of which they would come into a new covenant with him. But they have chosen to remain in the old. And a remnant will be saved out, but it's only a remnant. So, praise God. Anyway, uh, I had a, uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit ministry because I heard another brother talk about Jesus being God. And here's the thought. Was Moses God? Because you've got to connect Jesus with Moses. And if Moses wasn't a God, and the Word says that I shall send you another prophet as Moses, or Moses said, God said through Moses, that he would be as Moses, then he must be a man. <laughs> okay. He can't be God. All right. Uh, praise God. I don't like. I don't want to go into that anymore because uh, this is all going to be a part of the awakening. This is all part of the clearing of the waters, the purifying of the waters, the fuller salt that cleanses the waters and washes the waters, purifies the waters of the Word of God. Okay, and now the wise are going to receive it, come into an understanding of it. Listen to the prophetic utterances of what God is about to take place and do so that they have their eyes can see and their ears can hear the truth. And they, when that calling comes, amen, are going to come out from among them. Meanwhile, the uh, tares and or the foolish will be wanting to have what they have the oil that's been given to them in vessels, which we are vessels, okay, and they take these vessels with them, and that's likened on, spiritually speaking, to the Gentile carrying the sons and daughters back, all right, to the uh, east, and uh, to Israel, which Israel is not just a natural place, it's a spiritual place, it's the household of faith, it's the temple the kingdom of heaven, entering into the promised land, spiritually, which in the natural, represents natural Israel, but spiritually, in the greater, which is greater than Solomon, is the heavenly Jerusalem, as 144,000, coming down from Mount Zion, <coughs> with the new, uh, with the man child, okay, ministry, of which are the workmen of the 11th hour that gather the week together, and they meant Jesus, they enter into the ark, the barn. Now, so, what do we got? Well, Jesus, the Lord told us that he will shake both heaven and earth, and as I've told you, these things start to begin to affect the natural realm as well as the spiritual realm at the same time because the two men are being made one. The outer man and the inner man for the sons and daughters in the transformation from mortal to immortal, and natural Israel, the remnant, Amen, Jesus, in receiving <laughs> the Holy Spirit, the grace of God, and seeing him whom they have pierced. So these two men, both the law and the spirit, in the natural and the spiritual, are going about to come to go through a transformation. Amen, Jesus. So praise God. I just want to thank my, Bar uh, my sister Barbara and, and my uh, brother, sister believer, who, you know... Um, I love him, and, and I know he's got a lot of things on his hands with a family to, to raise and to care for, and uh, he homeschools his own children, and so there's, there's a lot going on in his life, and he doesn't get a chance to, to share as often as I think he would like to, and he doesn't feel 
as though he's being led by the Spirit of God to, to make videos anymore. I really uh, I enjoyed the one that he had a brother with. I'm, boy, that's very important, brothers and sisters. Take, take an example, a page from that example of his, of having some other brothers and sisters around you at this hour. It's very important. Um, and uh, so I don't know that I had uh, a whole lot that I wanted to go to it, uh, in as far as uh, the ministry goes. And uh, the uh, work and will of the Father beyond this point, because I, I, I tell you, it's just not, it's, we're right here now where what I've been sharing with you about what is about to take place and it actually taking place, there's just really nothing more I'm going to need to say. <laughs> because, amen, that testimony and that witness of that as a forerunner prior to that which is about to take place for the sons and daughters of God and in the church has has already been shared. It's already been shared. You've, you've received what it is that you're going to receive as a, a heads up uh, and what to look for and uh, so that it can become a testimony and a witness to you of the truth, okay, of what is taking place. It's already been spoken to you. It's been spoken into the earth, okay. <laughs> uh, what's it? What's the word say? Uh, the earth speaks and heaven moves. Okay, I believe that's how it is. So, Amen, Jesus. The earth has spoken. Okay, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, and now heaven will move. Uh, so, there are a lot of other things and issues of which we we'll probably will continue to go over. Uh, I, as far as the work and will of the Father. Uh, and the Holy Spirit and what it's about to take place in the church. Uh, like I said, I don't think there's any more need to go about that. We may share I, I, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, perhaps. But uh, mainly uh, being here uh, to start to receive the witnesses. Okay? <laughs> I hope. And start to uh, uh, have them begin to continue to share, like my sister Barbara and my brother sister Believer and, and, and others who have. Because uh, I don't care what you say. If you've listened for any period of time to what the Lord has been sharing uh, through this channel with you, okay, and any part of it has stuck, when you see these things beginning to take place, as I've said they would, as the Lord has said they would through me, okay, then you will come back and you will start to look over these things more closely to begin to come into an understanding. But, amen, Jesus, uh, rather he in the house right now as far as a, uh, an assembly or something or outside of the house, doesn't really matter, okay? But the point I was trying to make is that the sons and daughters in the gathering of the wheat and the separating, okay, will go into these households of faith, I believe, uh, to bind the tear hand and foot. So, how that's done, either through the ministers of fire or the sons and daughters of God, still, you know, things that are like, like we had talked about, okay? It's like a fine-tuning, okay? When we, we discern in the Spirit, uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, in our study of the Word of God, we become more finely tuned, in tune, because we've got this song, okay, the new song, amen, and the... Uh, better wine, which is about to be served. So, we have a great feast to enter into, and I believe that's going to happen with, uh, within the next three years. And uh, this feast that we're coming into is a great feast, but I, I believe there's something even more for us, even after that, of which we enter into the promised land, or into the ark, the barn, the covering, the anointed covering. I believe there's something even greater, all right, that's going to be shared among the brethren, of which the doors have been shut and our enemies are all around us but they can't touch it. Amen, Jesus? Now, it's during that period of time of which I believe the transformation, okay, just prior to the judgments of God, all right, the transformation from mortal to immortal takes place. We're looking at at least another six-year period, okay, but a lot of activity, both in the church and because I believe the shaking of heaven and earth 
amen, is about to begin. Now, it's going to be gradual because we're looking to try and test the hearts of men. You have to keep this in mind. This is not the period of judgment. This is the period of tribulation, the trying and the testing of the hearts of men. So you don't do that by cobbling and I'm killing 20 million right off the bat. That's just not how you do it. You have to understand he's the merciful and loving God. So he's probably going to do, <coughs> like I say, the Psalms 83 war. These, uh, the earthquakes and things that do take place are going to be much more devastating. There's no question about that. And there will be more people involved and more damage done, all right, in order to cripple the economy of the world. Because you've got to come to a one world government okay, of which there's a one world currency, all right, and these things will take place, and there are things that have to take place in order for us to get in line for these things. Martial law has to take place for a reason. Now, we have Katrina, okay, which is devastating for that area, but the whole country to get in place under martial law, it was just in that area. Well, things have to happen in, in, that would require martial law throughout the entire land, okay, which is a civil uprising that affects most of the country. Some more than others, but most all of the country. These things have to have rhyme and reason to them. There will be a logical pattern to them, because it's man's wisdom and his heart that's being tried right now. Okay? So, meanwhile, the work goes on in the church, <laughs> in the body. And the resurrected body starts to come forth. The new one, the new body, the renewed, <laughs> okay, uh, set of bones that come up out of that pit and get new sinew and new flesh. Amen. So, I love you guys. The Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. I'll go back over this video. Maybe there was something else I wanted to share, but I didn't remember to do it. I love you guys. Amen. Amen.